Okay, Mona, welcome. Today, we're going to be talking about perspective and sales. And just so you guys know, uh, Mona is a great friend, but also a sales and communication coach. And we're going to be talking about everything sales, starting with, go for it, Mona. So let's first start off with the attitude towards the word itself. So, um, Odie, what do you think when somebody says sales? What do you think like the common person feels when they hear this word or when they see it? Like, I don't want any part of this. Don't call me. Don't approach yeah. me. You know, uh, I remember one time I was at the mall. I was walking with my wife and my little guy. And a, a, a guy that works at a bank literally just stuck out his hand. That was the first thing he did. And okay. I put my arm around him. And I said, come here, can I ask you something? He's like, yeah. I said, is it working? Is this approach working? <laughs> You're just picking out your Because <laughs> it's usually like some sort of high first. But Yeah, he didn't people, say anything. He just stuck his hand he out? stuck his hand out. Never seen that ever. And I said, man, build a little rapport. Talk to the person first. But generally, people, when they hear sales, they think of something creepy, something annoying, something right. irritating, and I don't want any part of it, typically. All right. Exactly. Exactly. What's your experience, Ben? Yeah, it's it's a hundred percent the same. And I mean, I, I teach courses on this, and like the courses all start with this because in order to be able to teach anybody how to sell properly, they first have to get over the mindset, um, you know, all the challenges that come with everything they've dealt with from what they understand to be sales, traditional sales. So years and years and years ago, sales was taught a lot differently than it's taught now. And I think this is where a lot of the issues come from, because if you go back and if you look at a lot of the like previous sales trainings from like longstanding sales coaches, you'll see that they have very like harsh tactics and very kind of like in your face and I don't care. And they'll lie even they'll straight up say, just lie. Right. And so that's what I think we're conditioned to as human beings. We think sales equals lying. Because it's all about the results, right? You just got to sell. Right. Whether the person wants it or not, right. whether they want that amount of that or not. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of in your face and aggressive, right? Exactly. That's exactly what it is. In your face and aggressive. That's what traditionally it 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 used to be. Mm. And I think not enough people are accustomed to like the new age sales, which is understanding what the customer wants, learning about the customer, asking the customer questions. And that's why a lot of people now, we were saying before, you mentioned that people don't even call it sales on their business card, right? It would say like something totally different. Yeah, business development, right? Or, yeah. or I know yeah. people that'll say, no, I don't sell. I just connect people. I just connect people. Yeah. To yeah. yeah. So we're too afraid or not. to even say it. We're too afraid to say what we do. I know. Oh, I'm in partnership management or I'm in... <laughs> client um acquisit client acquisition right business development like all these things like find any other way to sell it or to to say it so that people don't get scared from the beginning and you know what's so interesting it's one letter that's throwing everything off because people don't have a problem with the word sale but as yeah, soon as you put the right. s at the end right all of a sudden it's like oh like I, I want something on sale for sure i like the word sale are you saying my favorite suit's on sale? But now yeah. throw that S at the end and all of a sudden, like, I don't, I don't want anything to do with that. That's crazy. Yeah, it's true. But, um, but crazy. I think one letter makes all. Exactly. One little letter at the end. But you know, um, what's interesting is that uh, you talked about modern day sales. And I think the reframe on sales really needs to be what it's really about, as you said, right? It's, you know, finding out what somebody needs or what somebody wants. And for me, that falls under the category of service. Like you're just, you're just serving another human being, right? Right, exactly. And that's why a lot of people now, not a lot of people, in fact, every single person. So for anybody that's watching this, if you think to yourself, like, I don't sell anything, this is not relevant to me. That's not true. This is 100% relevant to you, your friends, your family, your people you don't like, people you do like, everybody. Your children. Yeah. Uh, you, especially if you have children, that's a whole yes. other, we can do, how many talks can we do on selling when you have children? 100%. 
and you know um, what's interesting? I think I told you this story a while back about uh, Eddie, my son, my oldest, who was about two and a half at the time. And all he did right. was a very simple sales approach. Yeah. All he said was, Daddy, hug. I'm like, oh, God, my kid wants a hug. I pick him up. And then he points to the cabinet. And of course, in that cabinet, there's a jar of chocolate. There you go. That's, that's the one, two, right? Just Smart. hug, point. That was it. And he was selling. He was selling big time. And he sold you. He sold me repeatedly. And the best part <laughs> is that best kids client. do it. Yeah, like kids do it intuitively. He didn't have any sales coaching, did he? Exactly. And he doesn't see anything wrong with that. It's he wants to close a deal. He wants right. to get what he wants. And in the process, he's making his dad very happy because I want to see him right. smile and I got the hug. Right. So he's thinking, how am I going to get what I want from this guy? What does this guy want? Let me give that to him and he's going to reciprocate. Bingo. It's going to be so hard for this guy to not give me what I want after I just gave him what I know that he wants. He wants a hug. Cool. Wants a hug. And it was a, it was a great hug. And this story oh, has man. lasted, you know, oh, 10, man. 10 years ish. I get you. <laughs> they'll, yeah. they'll get you. We're all, we're all in sales. There's no doubt about that. And, and I think, what do you think we're selling? Mona? Like if everyone's in sales, what do you think the, the categories of, of sales are? What are the things that we're selling? I don't want to use the word, but what do you think people are actually selling? That's a good question. I mean, if you are, if your job is actually in that field, then you could be, you know, trying to persuade somebody to buy a certain product or service, but product or service not in the field, right? What if you're, right. what if you're a stay-at-home mom? What are you selling? Right. I think the third category, you nailed the first two for sure. Product and services covers a, a large amount of them, a large percentage of them things that we sell but i think the third one would be ideas ideas and opinions yeah yeah, yeah. perspective exactly. as we spoke about yeah yeah ideas opinions perspectives yeah yeah you can be having a conversation at dinner with friends there's no business involved here just having a conversation and politics comes up it gets heated. I mean, I don't know, at my house, it always gets heated. I leave the room usually, but I can hear it gets heated and everybody wants to convince each other of their perspective, of their opinion on it. Exactly. Exactly. That I mean, is selling. That is selling. That is selling. And, yep. And they're going tooth and nail sometimes, right? They oh, won't yeah. stop. They're falling and, off their chair. <laughs> right. And they're not getting paid. <laughs> no. Falling off their chair and they're not getting paid. Yeah. So it's clearly not about closing a deal. It's about, you know, getting a, a certain perspective across to someone, right? Getting them to see see life through your eyes. Exactly. You have an idea. You want me to think the way that you do, not necessarily because you want me to do anything, but just because as human beings, you want me to think in the same way. You want me to think that you are correct. Your way is the right way. Your opinion is the right one. Right. And we're constantly doing that with people that we interact with. Right. They just don't have a little badge over here that says sales manager or sales associate right. or business development. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. We should have the badge that says um, seed planter because right. the best the, the the best technique is that, which we can cover in another segment. Right. Plant seeds, plant ideas in people's minds. Seed planter. Okay, put that on a business card. Oh, what do you do? Um, hi, I'm an, I'm a seed planter. Yeah. <laughs> Plant seeds. It's organic. It's organic. Right. Right. You don't you. even notice it until it pops up and you think it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this. I planted. Did I plant this? I don't know. It's so beautiful. Yeah, it wow, it's an oak tree now. How did that grow so tall? Oh, I, I planted I that 20 it. years ago, but I love now it. Now you're convincing yeah. other people to plant that same tree in their garden. Yeah. Pass it on. Pass it on. <laughs> Where do you want to go next? Okay, so what would happen in your life if you embraced the idea of you being a salesperson? You would be more confident in your communication with whatever idea or opinion you're trying to get across. Right. So the sheer right. So think about it. If you are not confident in the word in general or the fact that you do this. So there's so many synonyms for sales, right? So persuasion, 
Influence. Um, influence. Uh, but yeah. But no, it, it's a good point, right? Because like, if you're rejecting the label of being a salesperson, then are you really putting everything into the conversation, right? Like you're holding back, obviously. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And, maybe, and, and maybe your viewpoint, maybe your idea, maybe your product and service could make a really you know, impactful difference in someone's life. Why would you want to hold it back? They're not holding back, potentially, if you're in a, in a debate with someone. So why not just give it all you got? Exactly. So, so you bring up another really valid point. So if you are in a sales position and you don't really believe in what you're selling, wholeheartedly. I mean, you don't really think that this product or service is truly amazing. That's going to reflect in your communication. There's no People are going to hear it. Even however, however much you try to mask that, it's not going to work. You're right. They're going to hear it. They're going to see it. They're probably going to feel it. Yeah. And they know that it doesn't mean that much to you. Like, why do you really want me to have these tires? Like, why are these tires? Yeah. Why are they important? Well, because you have children, right? And it does rain in the UAE sometimes now, if we're talking about local market here. Um, it does snow in your country, you know? Right. These wheels are not just to keep the car moving. They're to keep the car moving safely when your children are in the car. Right. It's back, right. To, it's back to what you said about service. It's about finding out what the other person actually wants, who they are, what they care about, and then relating that product or service or idea back to them in a way that they can relate to it the most. Right. That's the way it's going to happen. Right. And I think in the entrepreneurial space, it changes just a bit because when, you know, my son asked me, Eddie, who is about 10, maybe 12 ish, 10 to 12. When he asked me this question, he said, dad, um, how, you know, he's asking me about making money. I said, son, if you want to make money, it's real simple. Just go help somebody. Right. You know, it's like knock on the neighbor's door and say, Hey, we're going shopping for uh, vegetables. Is there anything that you need? And then stick a price on it. You know, I don't know, like a, you know, per item, you just charge a certain, certain small amount. And then he's mm -hmm. like, no. So, so that piece right there takes us to the point of, if you want to make money, which every human being needs, unless you're, you know, you don't actually, you know, you're okay financially, but, it, but if you want to live some, you have some dream in your life, finances and or provide you the ability to get the resources to get you where you want to go and take care of your family and blah, blah. But he didn't want to do that. So he knows how to make money, but he didn't, he wasn't interested in making money that way. And now the question is, don't you want to learn how to make money, serve and take care of people, but in the process, be doing what you love. Yeah. Very, very valid point. And yeah, the, an the answer is yes. I mean, for those of you watching, I mean, drop a comment if you agree with that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's a universal thing. If everybody wants to, I mean, ideally, the ideal scenario is do what you love doing. Mm -hmm. So you're not actually doing, you're just being, and you're getting paid in the process. Yeah. What's exactly. wrong with that? And you're taking care of people in the process and you're serving people in the process. What the hell's wrong with that? Nothing. Exactly. What's there to be you ashamed of? spaghetti on the ceiling while tying your right shoe? Do that <laughs> and put it on YouTube. And, and record it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you nowadays, you can actually do anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you, can. Sure. you see a lot of these YouTubers. I mean, they're just families having fun. They found yeah. a way to monetize it. Yeah. And they're Super impacting smart. people's lives. So smart. Exactly. Yeah, yeah but they're selling. Yeah, but there's a lot selling. of They're selling. 100% they're selling. They are selling a lifestyle. They are convincing people of how to interact with their kids. Um, they're 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 literally selling sometimes for other companies that have paid them, you know, sponsorship money. Yep. There's sales is every it's everywhere, everywhere. Right, and and why carry shame and guilt? Why not just call it what it is? Do a little reframe instead of calling it sales. Just calling it, hey, I'm serving people. I'm adding value to people's lives. I'm taking the time, as you said, to care, figure out what they want and need. And then I'm fueling that. I'm serving them. What the hell's wrong with that? Exactly. If you look on LinkedIn, if you look at people's um, title, you'll notice that 
very rarely do you see the word sales. You'll see it reframed, as you've said, into specific into what they're offering. So I help companies, if it's a, a digital marketing agency, I help companies attract more uh, customers online, right? right? So they're just saying it in a different way, which is really smart because they're not saying the word that deters everybody, but they're also saying it in a way that people can relate to. Like, what exactly do you do? Exactly. So Exactly. I think if we just uh, if we just move the shame and guilt away, if we're in if we're in the profession of sales, and just call it what it is. You can use different titles; it's fine. But just realize that it's okay to be selling something, and it's okay yeah. to make money. Because I think the other point is shame associated with finances, right? So people think like, oh, as soon as they find out I'm helping them and I want to cut, or because I'm helping them and I get paid somehow. Now there's something wrong with that. Just, just say, look, I get paid to do this. This is what I do professionally. But I want to make sure that I'm helping you get exactly what you're looking for. Yeah, that's a great point. We can do a whole other segment on that, how being direct and upfront is very much in your favor. And people really appreciate that, right? Think about yourself when, when somebody's trying to sell you an idea or convince you of something, if they're just very upfront rather than taking forever, not being direct. And you're like, well, is this guy hiding something? What's going on? So, yeah. Yeah. And I don't want to be up at night thinking, you know, uh, you know, how is this guy selling to me? Is he not selling to me? Is he getting a cut? Just, just find out. And instead of that person having now the next day to ask you, just tell them up front. Yeah. You know, and then exactly. the other, the flip side, Mona, is that I don't actually want something from somebody if they don't get paid. Because I, you know, when someone does something for you and for they free. don't want anything, yeah, I'm like, no, 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 yeah. you worked hard for this. I want to pay you for changing my tire on my car. I want to pay you for, you know, cleaning my house, for giving me this advice. You deserve it. I mean, there's nothing in this life that's really free, is it? Anyway. Yeah. So. But when someone yeah. doesn't value what they do, it makes it awkward for you. I, I think <laughs> if you sell me that house, you deserve a cut. Real estate agents get cuts. Why would I not give you a cut? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because you're ashamed of receiving money? Yeah. I'm not. <laughs> um, I'm not. I'm not allergic to money, and I don't know anyone. I mean, I know some people are, but that's it's allergic really here. They're not going to have an allergic reaction if you put it in their hand. Correct. That's a whole other stigma that we can talk about. I think for all the viewers, if you want to drop some comments in about what topics would you like to see uh, next in the next few weeks, because this can be expanded on in so many different ways, but we want to make sure that we're hitting the, the areas that you are really most interested in as soon as possible. So if you can let us know in the comments and then we'll, we'll try to, uh, touch on those as fast as possible. Yeah, please do that. Cause we, Mona and I have a lot to talk about. We've been doing this for how long, how long have you been doing this, Mona? Um, since I was born. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a trick question. I got you there. Yeah. Now like 22 years. Yeah, as as soon as I wanted that pacifier and that milk, milk first, <laughs> pacifier second, I just I knew what to do. I just actually that's true. Since I, I hit their pain to... point. Ah, help me. Exactly. Give so me it's a not help. a line. Okay. Exactly. Awesome. Anything else you want to cover? No, I think that's good for today. Thanks for watching, everyone. Awesome. Thanks for thanks everybody. Thank you, Muna, for suggesting this uh, great introductory launch of our regular hopefully interviews and discussions thank you sounds good see you next time see you guys